Hey there, my name is Ryan Hedgecock. Welcome back to another video. Today, I want to teach you how to make high performance native plugins in the Unity engine. But first, we got to roll it back. For the past eight months, I have been completely addicted to the Rust programming language. It's becoming a real issue. My wife will no longer speak to me, and I've resorted to doing lines of pure oxidized metal straight off our kitchen table. But it wasn't always this way. Well, it all started eight months ago. I heard of this fancy new language called Rust that promised so much compile time, memory safety, blazingly fast code, and cute little crabs. I, being a Unity developer, found it difficult to get into the language. After all, how do I use it in the Unity engine? And what the heck is this dark magic called the I was nervous, but my curiosity was certainly piqued as I loved the draw of squeezing more performance out of my code. This was exactly the kind of pressure I needed to cave. So the next step was my trek into the world of Unity's native plugins. Native plugins are Unity's way of using libraries of native code you can write in languages such as C, C++, and Objective-C, at least according to their website. But what they really mean is that you can run any native library as long as it has a C-style interface. And come to find out, Rust has just the tools to be able to do so. So, young and naive, I installed the tools to get a Rust project up and running. I made a Rust library using Cargo and hit the ground running. I first created a function called add1 that essentially just takes an unsigned 32-bit integer and adds one to it. A simple function to be sure, but I'm only a Rust fledgling here. The extern C part of the signature specifies to export this function with a C-style interface that can be called from outside our library, just like I was talking about earlier. Lastly, I added a no mangle attribute above the function to tell the compiler essentially, hey, don't mess with my boy too much, so that he can still be identified by other programs. All that was left was to shove my beautiful little library into the Unity engine. Now, just because Unity will let you shove a pre-compiled library into its innards, doesn't mean it's going to like it. We will need to create a translator of sorts. I created a new c -sharp file called new rust native project.cs and put the following in it. The DLL import attribute tells Unity how to talk to the Rust library. First, it's given the name of the library, which is new Rust native project, and told the entry point, which was add one. The method is named the same here, but it can be named whatever you want as long as you have the entry point specified. And that's it. I was now able to call the library from anywhere in the Unity project. I created a little script, added debug.log to test the function somewhere inside, and voila! That was it. That was the dopamine hit that I needed. After that, my world would never be the same. Now that I was hooked, I dove into the Rust book. I watched tutorial after tutorial, read blog after blog, and here I am, eight months later. I've made a number of Rust libraries. I've been cheating on Unity by building my own engine from scratch in Rust. I've honestly probably been cheating on my wife by building my own engine from scratch in Rust. Every second of every day is Rust. Now that I'm completely entrenched in that sticky Rust mucus, I've returned to shine a path for those who come after. The world of Rust is glorious, and Unity plugins are a great gateway drug to the insanity. But it's not enough. I want to be able to inject Rust straight into my bloodstream. Coming back to Unity after some time, I wanted it to be easier to OD on Rust. So, I've built a tool for more easily creating plugins for the engine that covers the main pain points I ran into in the beginning. First off, for any libraries larger than a single function, creating all those translation layers takes quite some time. But that's not the worst of it. One of the first issues I ran into when making native plugins was that once loaded, they could not be unloaded. This meant that I had to restart the Unity editor every time I made a change to the Rust code, which for anyone that's ever used Unity knows. Oh my God, Unity just open! So you can download the package I created below in the description. Once installed in your project, in the top menu, click Window Rust Native Manager. This will open a custom window for creating and managing Rust libraries. Make sure to set the cargo location, which is just the location of the cargo executable, and then create a new project and pick a name. After creating a new project, in the Unity project directory, but outside of your assets folder, should be a new folder named Rust Native. Inside there will be the fresh Rust project you created, all rip-roaring and ready to go. 
The library uses something cool called interoptopus to generate the C-sharp bindings. This exists within the bindrs file within src, and the bindings.rs file in the tests directory handles the binding code generation. This will create all the C-sharp translation layers that are necessary. Take a look at the interoptopus docs for more on how to use the binding generator. But essentially, all you have to do is write whatever Rust code you're going to write, add it to the bindings generator, go back to Unity and click the reload bindings button next to your project. And Unity will generate a new library with a unique ID and load it. This should allow you to make changes in your Rust library without having to constantly close and reopen the editor and without having to write those C-sharp translation layers every single time. <sighs> well, that was a lot. But hopefully this served as a good beginning guide on how to most effectively develop a crippling Rust addiction. While I can't speak for those in my life that care about me, I am in pure bliss using this language, and I know you will be too. So stay safe, have fun, and I'll catch you next time. Mm.